Joined in studio now by Ohio State men's basketball head coach, Jake Diebler. Coach, thanks for the time. How we doing? How we living? Season's getting close. It's getting close. Happy to be here. And, uh, yeah, felt like football weather outside uh, finally here these last couple days. Starting to turn into basketball weather is what it kind of feels like. That means it's getting close. That's right. Absolutely it is. Before we get to the game coming up here on Friday uh, in Cincinnati, you guys are playing an exhibition game. Did it last year against Dayton as well. How's the offseason been for you? I know it's a crazy time, not only in college basketball right now, but kind of with everything that's that's going on right now in the landscape of college athletics. It is a crazy time, but really excited about it. I think we're positioned at Ohio State to uh, be set up to 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 really thrive in, in whatever this new landscape, when it finally gets all these details ironed out, looks like. But um, in the meantime, you know, we're focused on having a great year. And so our guys have been working really, really hard. I love the competitiveness and the work ethic of our group. We, uh, you know, got a lot of newness around our program. So this this time right now is important to build that on-court chemistry. So how, how do you go about doing that, Coach, in this era now where the portal is so prevalent? You, we talk about it in football where you have 85 guys. Uh, basketball, much smaller group. You can have a 50% roster turnover, and that's not uncommon. How do you get those guys to bond as people and then also develop that chemistry as players? You know, we, we spent the summer really trying to carve out space for um, – chemistry to be built off the court we we dealt with some some injuries this summer guys that maybe came in with injuries and and type of injuries you didn't want to play through necessarily that maybe you could have during the season so we didn't get a, a lot of time to I think build on court chemistry five guys at a time type but we did we were really intentional about doing that outside of the gym we, we uh our guys went to dinner once a week this summer we called it family dinner no nice. coaches just the players um so we had a family dinner once a week Went on a family retreat to uh, Athletes in Action headquarters over in Xenia a couple weekends ago. So we just really try to try to create space for um, real conversation and chemistry to be built. Seems pretty imperative. I mean, now I, I feel like too with I mean the introduction to social media. I'm sure you guys are on the phone, and I know you got four kids under six years old. I don't know if they've gotten to the phones, but Bob, you can probably attest to that. It seems like everybody like lives on their phone, so to have <laughs> like actual real conversations with real people and those guys being your teammates is a really good thing. Yeah, we actually when we were at the retreat, we uh, we we kind of all put our phones up for a time period, nice. and a couple guys I think they were a little. <laughs> a little uncomfortable with that for 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 a period, but then everybody bought in and saw the value of just you know us focusing on you know real dialogue and, and interact. We played like some some board games. We did some different team activities. Had some intense monopoly uh, going nice. on. Monopoly is actually fun. banned in my house. Like I can't. I'm not allowed to play it anymore. Does that get rough? But yeah, like from yeah. this. Well, I'm I'm surprised our guys keep trying to play against me because I keep winning, <laughs> and now they're teaming up on me, so it's getting harder and harder. Oh, see, that's that. I always hated that. I'm growing up in a bigger family. I had three brothers, and it was usually the the alliances begin to form, right. and then usually if you're the one that's getting worked, someone like whacks everything off the board. I'm done. I'm walking out of here. Uh, so that that com- camaraderie right there. That's that's awesome to be able to build. You mentioned. You're pulling back as a coach, and you're a young coach, so in your mind you probably still feel like partially a player um, and being involved. But when you pull yourself and your staff out of the situation, who is the one driving that? Who are the couple guys that are kind of driving those interactions? You know, I think it's been a blend. I I think Bruce Thornton, and a lot of it has to do with just the relationship he and I have. I think there's a comfortability there. Um, Had had been the one who recruited him and – just been his position coach, you know, for the last couple of years. So, and I trust him. I trust, you know, what he's going to say and, and what he's about. But I think it's been organic to see guys like Michi Johnson. You know, he and I had a had a previous, you know, connection. And so I think he feels comfortable voicing his opinion and, and being a leader. And then I, it's been fun to watch other guys, whether they're transfers, whether guys maybe have been here or freshmen, just the, there's a natural um, blend in chemistry in this group. We try to be intentional about that when we invite people into our family. It doesn't always work out perfectly, right? But I think it's it's been really cool to see even even so much you know, we had a, a player led and organized like Bible study. And it's and so it's just been sometimes it's basketball related, sometimes it's not. And I think that's when you have a chance to have something special. I know I'm I guess new school 
to some degree, but I am old school in the sense that I think chemistry matters and I think it impacts winning. And so we're, we're continuing to work towards building that. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned Michi there. Obviously Ohio state fans are familiar with him played here for a couple of years, goes down to South Carolina, then gets back in the portal, comes back your relationship with him as a player prior. And then coming back here uh, to Ohio state, because Bob and I talk about the transfer portal all the time, whether that be in football or basketball and the crazy amount of numbers that just happen after a season. What's, what is that like for the fans out there listening and the actual like player in the portal approaching the portal? What is that? What does that system kind of look like for everyone out there? Well, the portal isn't as new in basketball right. as it was in football. It was something that, you know, I remember when I played, you almost had a transfer every year. You didn't have a lot, but, yep. and then you would get a transfer. You had to sit out at that time. It was a year of development. So a lot of coaches saw value in that. Now certainly has changed with guys not having to sit out and then being able to transfer multiple times. You know, it was a big deal. Then it became grad transfers was a big deal, you know, in basketball. Then it became the portal as we know it. So I think it's something we're used to, but, you know, from the standpoint of the, the hard part about the portal is you're, you're inviting people into your family and it's, it's, it's essentially speed dating, right? Like yeah. you're deciding, Hey, they're a great fit. It, it, watching the film and watching, that's the easy part. It's figuring out who they are and, and kind of what makes them go. And you're doing background checks and, you know, there's as best you can, but you have to make decisions in a really short window. Whereas if, when you're recruiting a high school player, you have, you know, typically a year or more in some cases to decide like, hey, that guy fits, you know, our program. So that's the hard part I'd say about the portal. Evaluating the basketball talent is because of the film access we have is is easy. It's just figuring out who they are as people. How much do you lean in? I know basketball, it's a, it's a tight-knit circle with guys playing AAU and playing for and against with these other guys. And sometimes they your players may have more experience with some of these guys in the portal than potentially you do. Uh, how much of that is potentially player driven where guys coming in on visits or I've played with this guy growing up, I played against him and having that feel that understanding that knowledge, is that something that you've been able to kind of lean into? Yeah. You, you, you try to figure out if there's any kind of connection cause you're looking for an advantage, yeah. right. In, in recruiting. So if it's guys played together in AU or maybe we're at some of these camps together and got to know each other, you know, you try to find, see if there's some sort of additional connection a lot of times we're looking to like, does that person have a connection to Ohio State? Is there someone in their family, you know, who who went here, or you know, are they a fan? So um, you try your best, but also I think what we're starting to see now over the last couple of years is there's value in seeing re- high school recruitments all the way through, because if these guys end up transferring, you know, and maybe you finish second or third, it gives you a leg up once they go into the portal because you have a better feel for who they are. This was the this was the case with Sean Stewart. You know, we recruited Sean Stewart. I, I was I was the one recruiting him. Comes on an official visit, ends up going to Duke, right? But he immediately when he went into the portal, we knew, okay, here's a guy we we believed in. We think he's got, you know, a really bright future. And he already had some feelings about Ohio State too. So that that was helpful. It is pretty remarkable when you look at just the the actual numbers around college basketball and what it was when you were playing even in the mid 2000s, 2010s, and I feel like it's really exploded uh, over the last couple of years. Let's get to your roster, the off season that you had came in like a wrecking ball. We know that uh, first game of the year last year when you were in charge, number one Purdue, you guys take them down, great leapfrog continuation from last season to this season, and kind of the characteristics of this team going into this year a jake diebler coach team is going to have what characteristics you know i I think i've tried to evaluate this through the lens of like what will make our former players proud in in combination with you know what i believe we need to do to win right but i think when people watch us play and they see us play they're going to see a you know a level of pace to us offensively both after makes and misses there's they're going to see an urgency um that we play with and then aggressiveness, both offensively and defensively. You know, one of the one of the reasons we were able to be successful down the stretch of the season was we were able to turn teams over more, and we were a little more aggressive defensively. That helped us get out, um, you know, in transition more. It helped our pay. Our pace was significantly faster at the end of the season. We now have a full, you know, off season to kind of prep and build our uh, system around that. But we don't want to be reckless either. You know, we want to play with poise. We want to make sure we're striving to be efficient. 
But there's going to be a competitiveness, a toughness, and an, an urgency and aggressiveness that we play with that should tell our guys, like, people should be able to turn on the TV or come into the shot and say, that man, those guys play really, really hard and tough. It's, uh, it's, it's very, very important, ultra critical. It, as you look at this, you see a you know, veteran blend on the team, some young, some old. You know, I've talked to some guys in hoops, like, get old, stay old. You know, can you do that? How does that? How does this blend you feel like fit with what you have as far as the age differences and, and how the lineup and is going to roll out? Well, I, I think, you know, I look at it this way. I think our perimeter uh, players who have a ton of experience and are really good players, you know, Bruce Thornton, Michi Johnson, all league caliber players last year um, in the same backcourt. You had Micah Parrish who played in the national championship game two years ago as a significant contributor, started on a Sweet 16 team um, last year. You know, you, you have those guys, Quez Glover, who's played a lot of college games. Like, our experience is in the guard position. I think that gives us a high floor. Then when you look at our front court, two former McDonald's All-Americans, although not a ton of experience, you know, former top 50 player, Mr. Basketball, and Devin Royal, you know, talented, not a ton of experience. Um, we added, you know, a 7-2 uh, kid, Ivan, from Croatia, who has international experience, but not Can a lot. Can you pronounce of... his last name, by the way? No. In okay. Yegova, okay. right? Uh, did I get it? That's really close. Okay. Yeah, but okay. I'm not going to let you set me up this morning. This morning. I, I'm looking for some <laughs> advice here. I'm just trying. If I hear it, I can reproduce it. If I, I don't know if he's in class right now, but I, I, he, I, we could call him and just try and be like, hey, can you? <laughs> but no, he, he's. So I, I think when you look at. When you look at our roster, our ceiling, we have a chance to really grow as this year goes on because our front court is going to get experience right away. And that's exciting for me. It may it may present some challenges early on, especially with our non-conference schedule, but what I believe it is, allows us to do is going into Big Ten play, it allows us to really have significant growth. We have these established, you know, talented guards, which is which is great. That helps coaches sleep well at night you know, having really good guards. But then we have this this upside that, that you know, we got to keep working towards in the front court, which, you know, should be pretty exciting. And, and I think it gives us a, a great chance to be growing as the season goes on. We're going to continue to hang out with Ohio State men's basketball head coach Jake Diebler next morning. Juice right here on The Fan. Oh, now Thor in a month. Wednesday edition of the program. Brandon to be Bobby Carpenter. Sharky out on vacation. We got our band Bodes doing a nice job. Continuing to hang out with Ohio State men's basketball head coach Jake Diebler with us in studio. Now we left off. We were talking about, is it Ivan or Yvonne? Yvonne. Yvonne. That's good. Yegavon. All right. How do you even begin to go after a guy like that from Croatia. I mean, are we sending scouts different places? Like what what's that like? Yeah, so we 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 do and we're being more active in the international recruiting space, you know, this summer and moving forward. But Ivan was was interesting. We had gotten some film from an agent um and you know, watched that initial film and like, oh, there's some, you know, real potential here. What got some more film? got some more film and we actually didn't get a chance to see him necessarily in person because of the timing of, of everything and how it developed, but zoom calls and, and all that stuff, getting to know him and, and telling him about Ohio state. And so that one, you know, it happened relatively quickly, but it was, it's fascinating. I mean, he he's, and he's blended in like perfectly with our team. He's, he's loving it here so far. And, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Did he know where Columbus, Ohio was before yeah. he ever came here? This is his first time in America. <laughs> That's amazing. That's great. It was, was middle of August before uh, fall semester started. So we talked a little bit about this non-conference, and different people have different philosophies on it, Deebs, and you see yours is very ambitious, to say the <laughs> least. I mean, talking Texas, you got Texas A&M, you got Pittsburgh, you got Auburn, by the way. You've got Rutgers and Maryland thrown in there. I mean, UK and like the CBS UK, Sports Classic, guess, Auburn. There's a lot going into that the potential for a lot of growth but maybe also some struggles kind of where do you see that push pull on that developing confidence while also trying to test your guys and prepare them for the big time yeah you know I, listen we, we want this program the standard of this program should be competing for big 10 championships i think they're in, in advancing in the ncaa tournament in order to do that you know and we're make no mistake we're trying to do that as quickly as possible 
And in order to get ready for Big Ten this season, we needed to test and challenge ourselves and, and figure out where we are. You know, we're going to know exactly where we are on November 4th. And it's not that that game's going to define our season, win or lose. But then we have, you know, a week and a half, two weeks to figure out where we are at that point on the road at Texas A&M. And we have these kind of checkpoints throughout the non-conference to keep getting us ready for Big Ten play, which in my, I guess you could say, biased opinion, is the deepest conference in the country. So we want to play against, you know, and have one of the tougher non-conference schedules in the country every year. And we were able to do that this year, and it's going to be a great test for us. What do you – let me rephrase that. How long does it take you as a coach to kind of figure out the lineup and the minute share – on any given season? Because, I mean, sometimes it's seven, eight guys who are in your lineup, and sometimes it could be up to ten guys who are who are given significant amount of minutes. Well, how long, ideally, does that take you to kind of figure out your rotation? I think because of the newness in the program right now, it's it's taking a little bit longer. Uh, I said this, it might have been last week, and I, I genuinely mean this. I, I think we have up to eight starters right now. Wow. <clears throat> I think we have multiple guys who are – who have earned the right to start. Now we have to pick five and, but, and the way we're going to play is going to, going to, you know, give room for a longer, a longer, deeper rotation, uh, especially starting out in the season with how, how long the season is. So our depth is a real strength for us. It's, it's helped us have real competitive practices and guys are, you know, that old iron sharpens iron, right? Like that's what we have right now, which is going to, I think going to benefit us. And it also, Listen, injuries pop up, you know, it's part of sports, and it helps us, I think, withstand anything that may come our way in that regards, too. So you've got a lot of versatility on your roster, height-wise, body type-wise, and you start talking about eight potential starters you know, being able to go deep. For lack of a better term, I mean, football, you would package, you call them packages, like we're going to play this style with these guys, and we'll be able to do different things. How much of that comes into play where we'll go big, we'll go small, more defensive heavy, shooting heavy, and maybe some of those different uh, lineups that you're putting out there? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we're starting to map some of that out right now. And, you know, I, not so much, I think, this Friday, but before we go into the game against Texas on November 4th, we'll have a couple different, you know, packages that, you know, lineup packages that we could put out depending on what the game requires in that moment. And I think it's a real strength to have that type of versatility. Yeah. Um, will we'll, we'll benefit us, certainly. What do you want to see get done on Friday in Cincinnati? Obviously, we know the backbone of their program is always going to be hard-nosed physical. That's just the way that they've been. That's the way that they're always going to be. What are you looking for Friday in that exhibition game down there? You know, a big reason why I wanted to do this um, was because two of our first three games are neutral site Texas at Texas A&M. And to be able to go into, you know, a sold-out crowd, um and get that experience in an exhibition setting. Like I, I don't, I didn't want our first time being in front of a big crowd to be be Texas. I didn't want it our first like road game to be Texas A and M. So this is a great you know run through prep for us. Also, Cincinnati's a good team. Mm-hmm. So again, it, it gives us a chance to like really see kind of where we are, knowing hey we got some things to work on and get better at. But they have they're they're kind of opposite us. They have almost everybody back. <laughs> so it's going to be a true like test for us to understand hostile crowd, veteran team, good, good team. It's going to have a good year. That stuff's great. And then the other thing for me was the opportunity to, you know, one, I thought what we did last year with, with Dayton and Anthony great and, yeah. and the story around he and his daughter and their family to be able to come together and, and support and raise money, you know, for mental health in Ohio was was really, really great. So we had an opportunity to do that again and wanted to, you know, wanted to do that. We really, we tried to get, you know, us, Dayton, Xavier, Cincinnati all together under the same roof to do to do something, you know, back-to-back exhibition games. So couldn't quite do it in the short time period this year, but hopefully, you know, we're open to seeing if that can happen in the future. So you're an Ohio guy, and you just mentioned, obviously, last year with Dayton, this year, you know, exhibition with Cincinnati. you got Youngstown State on the schedule, Pittsburgh, um, some teams in this vicinity, and tough of the non-conference sometimes, especially students are out to get, obviously, the shot filled up, but you start looking around at Dayton, Xavier, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, 
West Virginia, Cleveland State, the MAC schools that are all close. I mean, is there an effort to try to put some of that into the schedule? Quality basketball, but also more of a quality environment to get some people and some road fans and some traveling there. Yeah, listen, I, I, I'm a, I am a product of the Ohio high school, you know, and, and really the, the Ohio basketball culture and landscape. And so I think as as the head coach of Ohio State and, and this program, there's a responsibility to keep driving and pushing basketball as a whole in this state. And uh, being able to bring some some teams in here from Ohio, it doesn't it's scheduling is complicated, but I think when we can do it, 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 there's great value in it because it's it it benefits both parties involved. Like th- this game is a is another example of that. The event we're trying to do in the future is. I think it's good for basketball in Ohio and at Ohio state as, as that flagship program and and as the head coach at Ohio state, we need to keep pushing, you know, I think there's a responsibility to keep pushing basketball in Ohio and, and certainly what, which is a rich tradition, but keep growing the game in the state. Coach, before we get you out of here, I'd be remiss. Do you guys need a rebounding coach? Because we have a, <laughs> a guy in Anthony Schlegel who has long said that he would come in. He doesn't know anything about basketball. He wrestled, but box him out the gym and rebound is like the two keys that he knows. So if you're looking for a rebounding coach, I think he'll give you some time. <laughs> Those are really, really important. <laughs> um, and depending on how these first couple, you know, <laughs> exhibition games go, maybe I'll, maybe I'll take you up on that and uh, and and have have him come over and help us with the rebounding but um thankfully so far it's been a been a strength for us <laughs> and we don't have to uh risk anybody um maybe you know i all i remember of him is in tackling that guy on the field <laughs> and so if one of our guys get a rebound on him i just think like man is he gonna like spear him like he did you know but no we'll keep that in the back of my mind for for future if we need it get him a forearm pad like you moving around in <laughs> right. practice i think he could do some damage to that coach we appreciate the time thanks for coming in here we'll get together here soon again uh, before the opener against texas go get him friday against cincinnati and we'll check in again soon all right thanks guys appreciate it absolutely jake Diebler in studio with us